So what is a virtual CISO? So the, the way that I usually describe this to people who haven't heard of or worked with a virtual CISO is think about what a law firm does for law. So it's an organization outside your company that's going to provide you with cybersecurity, both advising and strategy, as well as actual work. And the work falls into two categories. It's the actual securing of your company, as well as the process of keeping you in compliance with the cybersecurity frameworks that regulators and your clients are going to want you to be in compliance with. Why do these virtual CISO services exist? Like, why do companies hire them? Ultimately, if you think about everything that goes into doing cybersecurity and compliance, there are a lot of moving parts. If you're a, a company that's considering whether to hire a virtual CISO or hire a cybersecurity team of seven people, it's going to be cheaper. It's going to be more effective to hire an outside firm because you're getting a lot of different people, a lot of different kinds of expertise. The other advantage is that a virtual CISO does nothing but this work, which means when it comes to meeting the requirements of your clients, meeting the requirements of regulators, passing your audit for some of these audited frameworks, your virtual CISO is going to be able to guarantee that you're able to meet those requirements, get you there more quickly doing it internally, you have a team that has a lot of learning to do that doesn't do dozens or hundreds of audits a month. And so the results tend to be worse. Those services you just described, who is that aimed for? Is that for early stage companies? Is that for public companies who, who are actually using these kinds of services? Yeah, it's a good question. And it's actually something that we often have this misconception of. People ask me all the time, what happens when I get 500 employees and outgrow this? Companies of all sizes use virtual CISOs. Again, think about the law firm analogy. Very small companies use law firms, but so does Amazon. Amazon uses many law firms. So even the biggest companies in the world are going to use virtual CISO services for a lot of the work. It just doesn't make sense to do in-house. So as you grow your cybersecurity team, you'll bring parts of the work within the company. But really, a lot of what an internal cybersecurity team does is manage your virtual CISO, manage your external security resources. So companies of all sizes use virtual CISOs. Are there different types of virtual CISOs or are they basically the same? There are different types. We tend to think of it in terms of three categories. So a lot of virtual CISOs or so-called virtual CISOs are individuals who may have been security practitioners and are looking to do some consulting. They're going to know typically a lot about one area of cybersecurity, but it's one person with one set of skills. The next category is going to be IT providers that do some cybersecurity consulting. So these will be teams that are able to help you with cybersecurity. Maybe they can help you with security on the devices of your employees. But this is companies that primarily do non-cybersecurity work. Um, they'll do a lot of advising, not a lot of implementing. And then the last category is going to be companies that actually are a full service cybersecurity managed service provider. A virtual CISO, think of it more in that case as a virtual cybersecurity team. They're actually going to come in, they're going to interact with your team the way your employees do. They're going to do the cybersecurity work for you. So those are really the three categories that, that we tend to see when we're interacting with kind of people who call themselves virtual CISOs. So what are like the key roles and responsibilities are what areas of security compliance are they actually touching on or, or could they potentially be helping with? So it depends on the client, but really all areas is the short answer. Some of my clients were helping them, for example, just with parts of the compliance process. So one of my clients is working on getting HIPAA compliant. We're helping them just with the policy piece. They do the implementation themselves. We have another client though that we're doing everything for them. So in that case, not only are we helping write the policies, we are training their employees to adhere to the policies. Engineers on my team have access to their cloud infrastructure, actually the ones enabling the logging, implementing the security. So it really varies. You asked earlier the question of kind of company size and what you're doing with a virtual CISO. As your company grows and as your internal team changes, that answer is going to depend. As a very early stage company, you probably want your virtual CISO doing things like monitoring antivirus alerts 24 seven on your endpoints or your servers, because you probably don't have an engineer who wants to be staring at that day and night. As you grow, you may bring some of that in in-house. So really depends on the needs. Last thing I'll say on this is it tends to be driven by what your clients need. So the way that the roadmap usually goes, you bring on a virtual CISO because a client of yours, a partner of yours needs you to have certain cybersecurity in place. You want to work with that partner, so you want that cybersecurity in place. Typically, then, your roadmap for security is going to be driven by meeting that partner's requirements, and a virtual CISO will typically help you with everything that client or that partner is asking for. You mentioned IT security. You talked about cloud security and application security. You mentioned compliance policies. 
I guess by that you mean like audited frameworks and those sorts of things like SOC 2, ISO 27001, HIPAA. My question is, if somebody doesn't want to hire a virtual CISO for whatever reason, what are the alternatives to getting someone to do this for you? Yeah. What are your options? If you don't want to hire a virtual CISO, option one is to, to DIY it. A lot of companies try that, some successfully, some unsuccessfully. That, that requires you, part of your engineering team, typically part of your operations or legal team, depending on company size, to learn these skills yourselves, right? So from a kind of ops perspective, it's going to be understanding what you need to do in your infrastructure to meet the requirements of these frameworks. From a personnel or kind of company perspective, it's going to be collecting the documentation your auditor is going to want to see around things like background checks, HR policies, employee performance reviews. Many companies do absolutely do it themselves. It tends to be very time consuming. And that, so that's a, a factor to consider. And then the other factor is depending on how complicated your company is, there's the real risk of getting it wrong and having a problem when your audit comes. One client we just started working with at, at my company, we're coming in, they got their SOC 2 audit report about two months ago. And there are some exceptions noted in the report that they couldn't convince the auditor not to include. Now, whenever they share this report with a third party, that's going to show that there are exceptions to their implementation of their own policies, and a third party is going to ask how that's been addressed. That's the kind of thing you risk when you DIY your cybersecurity. The other option is to hire a security team, which is a little bit less DIY, right? You're hiring experts, professionals. That just tends to be very expensive. If you think about the kind of good virtual CISO, you're going to get a team of three to seven people working on your account now, and they're going to have expertise in different areas. There'll be someone who knows cloud security, someone who knows IT security. They'll be an expert in policy. They'll be experts in these different areas. So if you don't want to DIY it and you don't want to hire a virtual CISO, the alternative is hiring a, a pretty substantial number of employees, which escalates really rapidly in cost. And again, back to the law firm analogy, the even very big companies are still going to outsource a lot of their legal work because it just doesn't make sense to hire enough lawyers to cover every area of expertise of the law. That's a really good point. It actually brings me to my next question. What are the benefits of using a professional team or a virtual CISO versus doing it yourself? Besides the cost, you might save some money. Doing, you, know, you may save some money in the short run doing it yourself, maybe. It might take you longer to do, but what are the benefits of doing it with a virtual CISO compared to DIYing it? Two things. First, we see clients get their objectives met much more quickly with a virtual CISO. So if you're doing DIY, it may take you two, three, four months to be ready for an audit for SOC 2, even as a small company. Working with a virtual CISO, you're usually looking at 15, 30, 45 days. So time is definitely of the essence not just from an audits and frameworks perspective, but also meeting other client requirements. One of my clients was asked by a security questionnaire whether they were doing a uh, certain intrusion detection in their cloud environment. They were starting the contract in two weeks. We wanted them to be able to say, yes, they were. And so we helped them to implement the security within those two weeks. If you're doing it yourself, that may take longer than that. And so you're stuck in a position of needing to tell that third party that you're not doing something. So a virtual CISO can really help you navigate from a speed perspective, make sure that you're able to meet your objectives much, much quicker. The other piece is just quality, right? If you're doing it yourself, you may be an expert at one area of cybersecurity or compliance, but by nature, it's really difficult for one person to be an expert in everything. It also probably doesn't make sense for you to hire someone who's an expert at everything, because again, you don't need a 20-person security team. The advantage of a virtual CISO is because you know, that they're going to have a team of people who are working on multiple clients. They can have someone on staff who's an expert at cloud security. They can have someone on staff who's an expert at GDPR policy, who, who, who's an expert at IT security, who's an expert at firewall configuration. And so ultimately, the, the quality of the results you get is going to be a lot better because experts are going to be doing each individual cybersecurity and compliance task instead of a generalist needing to, needing to learn all, all of the above as, as they do their work.